This is the podcast. You- <laughs> podcast. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the podcast you've all been waiting for. Podcast number four, all about puppies. We are going to be having our first letter this fall. All of my social media platforms, their main purpose is to be an advertising arm for my breeding program. It is my number one goal in life to have the best protection dog training facility on the planet, not only specializing in personal protection dogs, but having dogs that are trained to the highest level and can fit into an entire personal protection detail. And that all starts with the most amazing female dog I have ever laid my eyes on, the Thangle of Gangalang, Alexandra Folsom. Oh, no. She has her own last name. Don't even try. She's an independent woman. She don't need no man, even if it's her trainer. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Exactly. If anything, she'd, like, hyphenate. <laughs> Alex- so she is Thangle of Gangalang, Empress Alexandra. Is that better? Perfect. She has it all. She has the food drive. She has the temperament. She has the nerve. She has the bite genetics. She has the energy, but she's also snuggly. She's also understanding of how to just relax and be a house dog, to snuggle, to give belly rubs, to get in bed and just be under the covers and be all sweet. And yet she knows how to stand up for herself. Just the other day, Ulrich and her were at the water bowl. She's drinking water after they finished wrestling. He decided he was going to bully her out of it. And she was like, Hur! not so much that it hurt him or caused a scuffle, but enough to say, look, that is not appropriate. I am Thang and you give Thang space when Thang's is drinking waters. Yeah. No one mess with Thang. She put no them one. in their place. In their place. This is Penny, if you don't know. She is the woman, the extraordinaire, who is behind the scenes doing editing, filming, setting up the cameras, and also has been a huge help with my father. For two months, he was in the hospital, and that took about three hours of my day from driving to the hospital, which is about 45 minutes away, coming back, and spending you an hour, hour and a half with him, it just was making it impossible to to get everything done. And Penny agreed to stay here on the clock and walk the dogs, play with them, throw the ball with them while I was gone. So when I came back, things weren't just totally piled up on me. Uh, so thank you so much for, for that, Penny. Of course. And walking all the dogs and playing with them gave me a chance to, like, get to know all of them especially thanks she is definitely the most like has her personality the most developed which is funny because she's the youngest but she is a fireball she's so fun to hang out with she's the only dog i've napped with and she was amazing so cuddly so sweet but yeah it was great to get to know her more and yeah i'm really grateful for that opportunity you know it doesn't surprise me that you say that because she is by far well maybe not by far but she is the smartest dog here Ulrich would give her a run for her money because he is so cunning. He's always thinking. That's one of the things that I love about Ulrich is uh, he's always trying to maneuver and put himself and think three or four steps ahead to how can I get what I want even though you don't want me to have it just yet. Uh, but Alexandra, her intelligence is just through the roof. How quickly she learns things, how easily she picks it up. You know, a lot of people see my dogs doing these amazing things and think that I'm some like brilliant trainer. I think I'm a good trainer, but these dogs really make it so much easier. We've done a lot of TikToks where people say, you know, train your canine puppy inside of a store with distractions. And when we did that with Alexandra the first time, we just walked in and did it. Like there was no, she had never been in Lowe's before. We had never done distraction training with her. I just went in Lowe's. We did a few reps and then had the guy grab some stuff off the shelf and start banging it and clanging it and jangling his keys jangling dingling trying to distract her but no she wouldn't take that she knows what she's there to do she trains yeah she is the thing and we just showed up and she did it there was no needing to acclimate her to the store to then practice engagement to then get her used to doing commands inside a store to then try to do you know distractions somewhere else we just went to the hardest level and that is one of the reasons these dogs can reach such an amazing level of training is while everyone else is still trying to figure out the controls 
She starts off on the final boss and defeats it the first try. It's another reason that it took me so long to get this female, to find the perfect one, is people don't want to let them go. The females that you see, the dogs that are being bred currently in the States, are a shadow of what you see being raised and, and bred in Belgium. And the thing is, you kind of have to take a, a chance because the best dogs are in people's backyards. Just being bred and raised by these farmers where, you know, their biggest ego flex is to have the hardest, the the most powerful, the best trained dog, you know, of anyone around. And so I took that, you know, that chance on Alexandra because of all the greatness, those little things that I saw in her. And it is really paying off. We'll be having our first litter this fall. It'll be Alexandra's fourth heat cycle. She'll be a bit over two years old. And I am so pumped. Right now, we are working on putting together, uh, we're turning my barn into a climate-controlled kennel. It'll have its own private fenced-in yard area with different obstacles and things to train the puppy. The kennel will have its own grooming station and everything else that you could possibly want. I am so pumped, so excited to be able to get this done it's going to be killer yeah it's going to be great it's it's kind of funny having all these people here building it but it's going to be perfect when it's ready yeah it's you know it's frustrating because i really think you know when you have people at your house you should be extra you know courteous to them so i never let the dogs off leash uh around other people who are working here because you know even if i feel like even if i'm like you know, do you mind the dogs? Are they going to bother you? They're, you know, they're kind of like put in this awkward position where if they say no, then they look like the bad person. And so I don't even ask. I just make sure that the dogs are, you know, either on a different part of the property, nowhere close to them. Uh, because luckily I can, you know, just call them with my formal or informal recall. They're going to come to me. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's been difficult. However, it is going to be so worth it to have this expanded area for the yard and then also the entire puppy yard. Um, this has been dubbed the year of the puppy because, oh my goodness, eight to ten Malinois puppies. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to have to expand. We're going to be putting out a clip uh, pretty soon looking for more employees because my goal is by the end of the year to have, I would say, at least four um, to help out with just the simple things, really, of, you know, letting the puppies out, you know, making sure that they have ample clean space and, you know, me trying to do that on top of everything that I'm already doing would be absolutely impossible. Yeah, a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure they're getting the best possible care because they're thangs babies they're thangs babies you know even though we will have a kennel that's going to be you know on one side of the it's not that far from my main house uh but you know they will all be you know able to be in regular crates inside the house we'll be rotating them so that they can learn to sleep in the house um because if you come into my house none of my dogs stay in high security kennels like all of my dogs are just in the regular kennels that you would get at any pet store, whether it be a plastic one or just like, you know, the black wire ones. I have no issues. My dogs don't chew on the kennels. You know, they don't try to break out. Um, and I want to make sure that the dogs that are being sold will also have the same level of house manners. Definitely. Yeah. So we've gathered the most common questions about these puppies, and let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first question? <laughs> Go ahead. How old will they be when they're sold? Two, Emma, two and a half to three. I want to make sure that the dogs are not only fully physically mature, but that they're also mentally mature. You wouldn't want to send a 16-year-old, you know, off to a dangerous situation because they don't have the mental faculties to fully understand and process what's going on. Uh, and you want to make sure that the dog isn't going to, you know, falter when they're needed the most. So it'll be closer to three years old. Awesome. And obviously these dogs are going to be in high demand. Do you have a waiting list currently? Uh, we don't, but I am going to be putting together one uh, on my website or maybe just through a social media post and having people email, uh, we'll have some form of a uh, 
kind of like an intake form to get people to tell us, you know, your background, who you are, why you need them, etc. Awesome. Okay. okay, so what types of jobs will they be doing? They'll be doing both personal protection work and detail protection. I want them to be able to run the full gambit, whether it is uh, working protection for a diplomat who has 30 people on his payroll to a person who just needs a personal protection dog, maybe, you know, has had stalkers in the past. Uh, so I want them to feel comfortable doing a job that may be requiring them to rappel down a wall or sit on a couch on a lazy Sunday afternoon with their owner. Whoever they're sold to, you know, there's going to be certain requirements that they can keep the dogs mentally and physically safe, happy, healthy. Uh, so that includes, you know, regular exercise sessions, uh, making sure that they're kept in, you know, uh, uh, a safe environment and, you know, not just in a dungeon outside and kind of forgotten about for 99% of the day. So I'm going to be very picky, very selective uh, with who can acquire the puppies, acquire the dogs, because, you know, these are going to be the closest thing I'll ever have to children. And that's one of the reasons. Another reason that I have the big social media accounts is so that a lot of people are going to want them and I can be extra choosy and make sure that they only go to the best homes. Yeah. So speaking about people who would want these dogs, what about people who can afford them because obviously they're amazing they're going to be trained very very well but what about people who need them but just can't put the money together so the person who actually got me into this style or this type of training uh was brutally attacked in her own home and ended up getting a protection dog shipped over from germany uh this was maybe 15 years ago and just like completely changed her life her PTSD was much better. She was able to function. You know, she didn't feel as scared at home. And I just saw what type of impact that had on her. And it was kind of through her that I got into training. And so I decided that when I had my breeding program, that one puppy from every litter was going to go to someone of uh, that isn't in a high income status because the dogs obviously are extremely expensive. And, you know, a lot of people who are in need of them are not in an upper economic status. And so I want to make sure that everyone has that opportunity, um, you know, whoever. And so that means that the price, if, you know, they won't be free, but if the price, you know, if, if, a, if it's a sacrifice of is $5, if that's a sacrifice, then the dog will cost $5. Um, you know, there will be certain things written into a contract, you know, saying that they'll have to like keep up with the dog, you know, that they'll have to come for regular training, things like that. Um, and so, you know, because I still have to, at the end of the day, make sure the dog is going to a home that can uh, provide the physical, mental stimulation that it needs. But I want to make sure that, you know, everyone has an opportunity or access to dogs like these and not just super rich people. Definitely, yeah. And I bet it's rewarding to see that, like, uh, something that you put so much work into, like a dog, uh, will go to someone and be able to help them so much. Oh, yes, yes. Um, you know, and it's just, it would make me feel good to know that, you know, one of my dogs is, you know, making a difference in someone's life that couldn't otherwise, you know, afford or gain access to something like that. Definitely, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed our podcast number four, All About Puppies. If you have questions or what you would like to see us talk about in future podcasts, Make sure to put them down in the comments. And uh, if you couldn't tell, we had to have a little bit of fun with this one. So we were a little over the top talking about podcast number four. Thank you so much, Penny, for being here today on YouTube. Of course. Ha 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 ha. ha.